hi all welcome to a new video lecture on uh, dbms particularly the topic we will discuss here is three schema architecture so in the previous part of the video we saw introduction to dbms the various terminologies schema instance and state uh, state different states these are all the things we discuss so far some terminologies now let's see uh, one popular architecture called tree schema architecture so a variation of it uh, we will implement in practical case so it is something like uh, so previously we disc uh, discussed some of the characteristics of the database management system or how it is different from a file uh, based approach okay so hope you remember or uh, so you have to watch the videos in sequence then only you can link the topics okay so if i am explaining this i may be referring something from the previous video so in in the sequence i given uh, you are supposed to watch the video so the uh, three schema architecture was proposed to help uh, achieve and visualize the following three characteristics of the dbms approach we discussed some four characteristics of the dbms approach and out of them these three can be visualized if you follow this three schema architecture and all uh, hope all of you know what is schema so that is nothing but the structure of the database right so and once you populate it with the data and each data we call as instance right and we will get different states of the data initially we have empty state then uh, initial state current state like that so uh, using this three schema architecture we can achieve these three characteristics of the database approach first one i hope you remember the use of a catalog to store the data description so as to make it a self describing the self describing nature of the database which allows the database to describe itself say uh, using that metadata information by keeping it in the catalog so by referring catalog you will get a, a description of the uh, database so we will store both the data and its uh, definition right and also insulation of the program and the data uh, hope you remember program data independence or program operation independence so the actual data is separated from the program that uh, is executed in the by the application program support of multiple views of this um, database uh, and what is view a subset of the actual database right or um, what a particular user is interested is what we call as a view it's a like a virtual table right so uh, we um, for different different users we need a i mean different views of the same database sometimes so that these three things we can achieve if we follow three schema so or to achieve these three properties of dbms software we are supposed to follow something like a three schema architecture on the background the goal of the three schema architecture is to separate the user application from the physical database of course the abstraction uh, kind of thing that is the main goal the user application program should be separated from the physical database physical database should be kept separately and along with that we will store its description in the catalog and user application will run on top of it so in this architecture the schema or the structure itself can be defined at the following three levels so there is something called as an internal schema at the internal level there is something called the conceptual schema at the conceptual level so you know conceptual level is a high level right uh, so that is very close to the uh, user internal schema is something close to the actual implementation so low low level schema okay now in addition to that you can think of something called the external schema or user views at the external or the view level so this is something that is very much closer to the specific user okay so this third schema is introduced to achieve this third property of the uh, characteristics of the database approach that is support of multiple views to support multiple views we need uh, the view uh, some schema at the view level also so that is what we call as the external schema so these three things are explained here let's see this diagram and then we can go back to the explanation so you know these are all the users the end users right who are the consumers of the uh, database so uh, each user is interested in a particular view of the database maybe uh, this could be in a university data uh, dbms uh, this could be someone who Mm, is reporting the grades of the students so he is interested only on student details and grade details right now this may be the uh, one who is uh, sitting at the account office and he uh, supposed to know uh, supposed to sh um, so whenever there is a query he may supposed to rip, uh, retrieve information like the fee related things the payment so whether the semester fee is paid by a given student or not so that kind of information so he is interested only on student data and the mm, Uh, fee related things okay so uh, 
uh, to the next level i mean this is the topmost level uh, which is very close to the end user and in between i mean at at bottom level we have the internal schema so that is at the internal or the lowest level right so the actual where you can see this schema some is something closely related to the stored database actual database and along with that we will store that metadata in the catalog also so this internal schema is something that is directly interacting with the stored database and between this external and the internal schema we have the conceptual schema so this is also something uh, closer to the user but uh, this is something representing the whole thing okay but external view you you know at any time it will represent a subset of the conceptual schema so that, that is the idea so we have external level conceptual level and internal level at the different levels we have a corresponding schemas or structures and from one level to another level we ha we have to map right so from external schema there should be a mapping to concept of schema from there internal schema then it we will go for the implementation so the this mapping is what we call as the external to conceptual uh, mapping and uh, here this mapping is what we call as the conceptual to internal mapping so that is also there and one more uh, Uh, thing we can um, think about at this point is something called as uh, data independence so that we will see so before that let's uh, just go through this uh, explanation here internal schema it describes the physical storage structure of the database the actual storage structure the internal schema uses a physical data model like uh, okay so uh, so we already know data model right so it is something that provides that abstraction the required level of abstraction and we have uh, this uh, popularly two um, things that is the i mean er model and uh, representational uh, model typically so some kind of data model you can think at this level internal schema so that is something very closer to the actual definition of the data so it is a low, low level data model okay so that then so the, from this mo data model you can directly map to the actual database implementation okay and it describes the complete details of the data storage and access path of the uh, database hope you remember this terminology we explained in the previous uh, lectures so so the internal schema it is something that is um, representing the actual storage information right and access path right how efficiently we can access some information so we keep this indexing and all with the help of this just like indexing is something you can visualize like the index in your uh, in the textbook and all right so using index you can directly reach that information easily because that page number those things are given something similar to that we will use in a database implementation also so that from a huge amount of data you can access whatever information uh, uh, th that particular user is interested in a efficient way somewhat faster like that quick retrieval of information is something achieved with the help of this access bar one way of to way to implement it is through indexing okay so that is something low level information so the internal schema correspondingly we have the physical data model uh, for achieving it now there is something called a conceptual schema uh, so it describes the structure of the whole database for a community of users so why we are using the term community of user for a specific user we have this external schema right the database for a particular user for a particular user uh, we have the external schema and for a community of user the whole, the external schema all together we have a common structure called the conceptual schema so that that is the thing so it hide see if you are looking at conceptual schema alone so there is no, uh, nothing like low level informations are not there right it it simply abstract low level informations or it hide see details of the actual physical storage structures and concentrates on describing entity because conceptual schema typically we uh, express using that er diagram right entity relationship diagram data types their relationship and the user operation and constraints okay uh, so uh, here you can't see anything related to this internal schema so these things are actually i mean physical storage details and uh, structures and all is up to the internal schema those things are hidden here and it express the entire thing is some um, uh, in a way that the user can understand right usually a representational data model uh, we already know uh, this representational and er model we discussed Uh, so we will see them in detail in the upcoming videos but just we given a overview right about it um, in the previous video so this can be used to describe the concept of schema when a database system is implemented the same representation model you can uh, use for external schema also actually these two things are same only here it is a complete thing so if you are focusing on a particular user what he can see is the external schema okay each external schema describes a part of a database it's not uh, about the whole database concept of schema is dealing with the whole database here external schema is dealing with just a part of the database okay that a particular user group is interested 
interested so here it is for a community of users here only for a specific set of users right uh in and hides the rest of the database from that user group so if you are focusing on that group for example the one who is reporting the grid he don't know details about the remaining things like that what is happening in the accounting session and all right the other uh, account officer um, um he is having an external schema he, but he, uh, where he is um he having access only to a subset of the data right the student data and fee related things other things is completely hidden from him okay so that kind of Mm, abstraction is what we are expecting from a three schema architecture so as in the previous level each external schema is typically implemented using represent is the same representation model here also we can use but the difference is this is for the whole thing this is for a subset possibly based on an uh, external schema design uh, in a high level conceptual data model okay so so this is a diagram is what we see now let's um, discuss one more small subtopic it is uh, or some kind of benefit you can think about this three schema architecture is this data independence okay uh, we can think about two types of data independence so logical data independence and physical data independence so logical data independence means it is the capacity to change the conceptual schema without having to change the external schema or application program so just look at the diagram here we have at top we have the external schema or where the application programs are interacting with and below or at middle we have the conceptual schema so the thing is that we can change this conceptual schema so whenever we are in need the whole structure represented by the conceptual schema okay so this whole thing you can change and when you are changing the whole thing the one who is working with the external view he is unaware about it so without disturbing this uh, particular person are you able to um, do modification over this conceptual schema if you can do that then you can say that there is a data independence between external schema and conceptual schema and that is what we call as the logical data independence logical means conceptual okay so the conceptual schema is independent of the external schema whatever modification you want you can execute here and you don't have to worry about uh, the external schema that will work independent of this if you can achieve that you can see that the conceptual data independence or logical data independence is achieved similarly between conceptual schema or internal schema and internal schema we can think about something called a physical data independence the second one okay physical data independence physical data independence with the physical data is independent of the conceptual schema so that is the way you have to interpret this internal schema that is representing the physical data is independent of the conceptual schema that means whenever you want you can modify the internal schema so why we need to modify internal schema maybe we want to change the way in which the information is being stored or a new access path is being added right like that there will be different situation where we want to modify the internal schema and that time you have to ensure that the conceptual schema is unaltered otherwise whenever you are doing some modification here you have to change the um, everything here and again you have to change everything here so that is some kind of rippling um, effect is there right so that is actually tedious so to do a modification here you are you have to modify here and here so that is something uh, definitely it is uh, time consuming so so can you do modification at this internal schema independent of concept schema we can do it because we are maintaining separate schema and uh, some kind of map mapping we are having between two schema so this also a benefit of three schema architecture three schema architecture is complete only uh, when it achieves this uh, conceptual or the logical data independence and physical data independence okay so this independence should be ensured so with the three schema architecture the concept of data independence can be defined as the capacity to change the schema at some level it can be at logical level or in internal level okay of a database system without having to change the schema at the next higher level so this is something that we needed uh, everywhere not only in database design in other software design also um, in computer network many situations you will see wherever we have this software protocol stack you should be able to modify some uh, level of the stack uh, i mean things at a particular level without altering uh, uh, the level uh, higher level so definitely the higher level will be depending on this lower lower one but the change should be done without making any rippling effect so this is a general software design principle okay mm -hmm. 
so we can define two types of data independence logical and the physical data independence i hope you understand what uh, what uh, about both so logical data independence is the capacity to change the conceptual schema or logical schema without having to change the our uh, one which is above it, that is the external schema or the application program we may change the conceptual schema to expand the database so the situations are like sometimes we want to expand the database conceptual schema is uh, dealing with the whole database structure right so you want to expand maybe by adding a new record uh, or you want to change certain constraints imposed on the database or you want to reduce the database size by deleting some of the records so in all these cases it, uh, it will go through some change in the conceptual schema so you should be able to do this without affecting the external schema so that is the essence in these cases external schemas that refer only to the remaining data should not be affected okay so that is the uh, goal after the conceptual schema undergoes a logical reorganization maybe by adding a new record or deleting or updating some constraints and all so whenever such a logical reorganization is happening the application program that reference the SK external schema construct must work as before they should not be disturbed okay so if we can achieve it you can say that logical data independence is there and that is a mandatory for any three schema architecture otherwise there is no meaning Changes to constraints can be applied to conceptual schema without affecting the external schema or application program. Okay. Not only for constraint, uh, the database structure, even everything. Similarly, physical data independence, actual physical storage details and uh, access bar, those things you can modify without affecting the higher level, that is the conceptual level. So, it is a capacity to change the internal schema, the lowest one, without having to change the conceptual schema, which is above it. Hence, the external schema need not be changed as well. So, as you are not changing the conceptual schema, definitely external schema will also not be changed. Okay. And uh, uh, even though you want to change, uh, there is independence there right that we already achieved so the changes to the internal schema may be needed because some physical files were reorganized so just like where we want to um, modify the concepts of schema internal schema is to be modified in different situations like uh, uh, you know internally we are representing information uh, the data in the form of files and the file structure is to be reorganized for example for by creating some additional access structure so you know depending on the type of application in between sometimes we will create new access structures so new way of accessing the data maybe due to a particular set of requirement right so that may improve the performance of the retrieval or update so definitely access path uh, cleverly setting the access path is going to improve the performance of the system because it will reduce the searching time of information so this is a short way of reaching the information at the earliest so sometimes you want to modify it based on your application requirement new access path will be defined and that time this should be you should be able to do this without affecting the concepts schema so that is essence so it is uh, if the same data as before remains in the database we should not have to change the concept of schema so there is no change for the data that is a highlight we are only changing the structure so that structure uh, or the actual storage details you can modify without affecting it but the data itself if you are changing there is a change in the concept of schema so that is different thing here we are talking about the structure so generally physical data independence is easy to achieve where logical data independence is hard to achieve so that uh, we can uh, visualize somehow once you understand it clearly yeah, you know uh, physical data on that structure modification is actually easy compared to i mean whenever you are modifying uh, the database with uh, some new set of data or deleting it can you do it without affecting the external schema so that is little bit tricky and challenging compared to the physical data independence okay anyway Hope you get an idea. So this is enough. The screen, three schema architecture is uh, repeatedly asking university question also. So you have to give that uh, importance to it. This and it's very easy. Just draw that diagram and explain all uh, internal, conceptual, and uh, external schema, and then just uh, talk about that data independence. Sometimes they can they specifically ask question like uh, what is logical data independence and physical data independence compare and all. So now you can answer all those types of questions from this, right? Yeah. Thanks for watching. Again, doubts, if any, we will uh, clarify in our offline classes.